the account. Please unmute. The government has taken several steps to push the export and India's oil seed are exported. Camera slightly forward. So, however, the domestic and the challenges move. faced by Cover the podium. especially policies like export ban, in the maximum export price, in compliance with the quarantine requirements and quality parameters of exporting countries, pertaining to grounding. Move the, the camera sli slightly in the front side. You need not so zoom in. Please move the camera the slightly in the front. Yes, fine. It is fine. It's a very good afternoon to you all. I'm very happy to be here as an external examiner. And I'll be happy to share some of the work which I have done with the soil insects. We always speak about those insects which are living above the ground like the pests, the parasitoids, natural enemies, IPM, like ma'am pointed out. These are totally different group of insects. As I was associated with the network project on insect biodiversity, ours was a nodal center for the ape pterygoids. So after joining my work, we started collecting all these things and it were it was so fascinating to see the rich biodiversity in various ecosystems so this is one part of my work like uh, collection identification and description of these soil insects what is their functional role in the soil ecosystem and what actually is the adverse effect of the agrochemical inputs which are being dumped into the ecosystem. We know pretty well that the ecosystem is a self-sufficient habitat wherein the living and non-living components, they interact for the continuous flow of energy. So in this ecosystem, we have the food webs, food chains. If these beautiful soil arthropods, they are removed from this ecosystem, then there will be definitely a collapse of the soil biodiversity and the nutrient providing capacity of the soil. These small organisms, they are the recyclers or the scavengers, which are responsible for converting the organic matter which are dumped into the soil from the non-available form to the available form. So we did various aspects of work on these organisms and I'll be happy to show the work which we So this is a comprehensive soil food web wherein you can see various trophic levels. In many trophic levels, you can see the involvement of arthropods. The soil arthropods include the oribatid mites, the columbolans, springtails, elatrids, proturans, dipleurans. These are the important uh, organisms which are responsible for decomposition of the organic matter which are dumped into the site. Next one, please. Here also you can see the involvement of these insects at various levels, proportion of biodiversity. Veloj is a scientist, he has roughly estimated and he has documented that 20 times the biomass of the human beings are present in the soil which are not at all explored till today. So this complex environment gives protection and food supply to various organisms. Nowadays we are talking about sustainable agriculture, food security. When these organisms are not saved, we cannot talk about the sustainable agriculture and food supply. Simply if you look into the soil which is rich in organic matter, we will be able to see thousands of soil insects. The field where there is a regular input of fertilizers and pesticides, it will have a drastic reduction in the population of these organisms. That is what is being given focus in the developed countries that is European countries and the American countries 
they are doing more research on these organisms as how to improve the population of these organisms. They include the columbolans, oribatid mites, encrytids, predatory mesostigmatid mites, and large arthropods. If you take just one spoonful of soil, which is rich in organic matter, you can see these arthropods up to 100. Hundreds of these insects will be available in the soil. Next one, please. This is their functional role. The insects occupy their niche. It is the place where it set, gives the separate set of nutritional requirements and they do their work at that particular niche. Next one. This is a comprehensive diagram published from our laboratory which is being published, uh, was published in Current Science and also in various soil journals, where we have documented various arthropods which are responsible for the soil fertility. Next one. If we classify them, there are decomposers, mutualists, parasites, root feeders, and many places these microarthropods, they play a major role. Next one. These, especially the group of insects which we work, the springtails, they are seen around uh, 10 raised to the power of 3 to 10 raised to the power of 5 per cubic meter. And they are abundant in one hectare of soil, that is millions. Next one. Especially these are the organisms which are responsible for the breakdown of the soil organic matter in which we work on the, the columbolans. Next one. These are some of the arthropods, even though the, we, uh, these are not response uh, related to entomology. These are the ar organisms which are arthropods. They are very important in the soil. If their population are reducing, that shows the indication that the fo soil fertility level is reducing. Next one. These are the uh, predat uh, predators and fragmentators. These are again paropods. They are uh, responsible for the conversion of small uh, liters into organic matter into nutrients. These are the group on which we are working, that is the springtails. They feed on the nematodes. They feed on the roots. They feed on the decomposing organic matter they are responsible for the excretion of the fine pulverized material then protura also we have done some work which are responsible for soil fertility then dipleurans next one please silverfish also we have worked on few genera then some other insects are also there like wasps beetles Scorpions. This is the oribatid mates. Oribatid mates is a very big group in the soil. If you want to identify the oribatid mites, there are no experts in the country, especially plant parasitic mites. We have the experts who can identify the mites. If you want to work on oribatid mites, there is not even a single person in the country to identify the mites. Previously, there was a person in Zoological Survey of India and uh, now he's retired. And the identification of these mites is a very big task nowadays. Again, these are the columbolans. What these organisms, they do on the soil productivity. They break down the organic matter. They release the nutrient from the non-available form to the available form. They are responsible for physical turnover. Generally, they improve the soil aeration. And they are responsible for better drainage. And ultimately, they are responsible for the environmental protection and economical benefits. And we can see papers today that these organisms should be put into the endangered species if they are drastically reduced. The government is maintaining a red data book in which the species which are nearing extinction, 
they are documented and they will be given uh, special efforts to conserve those organisms. We can see many such papers that due to the uh, um, unilateral, uh, indiscriminate and lopsided use of these agrochemicals, the population of these organisms are drastically reducing and we should take appropriate measures to build the population of these organisms. And even in the monographs of various people who work on these species, if you see, uh, I think you will be knowing about the types, type, what is a holotype? Can anyone say what is a holotype? The original specimen based on which the author has described. If you look into the habitat from the place the holotype was described, it is now very difficult to find that particular insect in that particular place due to deforestation and environmental changes and bringing the cultivated field and forest for human inhabitation. So this is a very big task. So some most of the species are nearing extinction and we cannot even find the type species in the type locality. This in our mind, we surveyed various states like uh, UP, Bihar, Jharkhand, West Bengal. Here you can see even today the pesticide use is very less so that we can get a lot of these type of organisms. So these are next to these are the beautiful collections. Simply if you go to a good maintained fertile field with rich organic matter, you collect the topsoil and if you extract the insects with the modified, we have modified the Talgren funnel to collect a large number of these organisms. So you will be so fascinated to see colorful different types of insects with different colors and different shapes. Next one. Again, these are the insects simply collected from the mango field, which is not put into much of the pesticide pressure. This is from the garden soil. We classify them basically based on their body structure. Globose insects and the linear insects, Arthropleona and Symphipleona. Just in the one-to-one -one fundamentals of entomology, we will be simply touching this. That is, there is one springtail as ma'am has told. But we try to uh, make further studies as these type of insects are very least studied in our country. So based on which we uh, identified various species, the linear ones and the globus ones. These are the linear ones. Next one. Again, various families, Siphoderus, Siphoderidae, Isotomidae, Falsomidae, again, Arthropleona. These are some of the globos ones, which are very less studied in our countries. Minthuras, you might have studied that this is a pest in various crops. And we have identified the Nilus, Nilidae, uh, various insects, and the Sminthridus and Sminthridae, various species. Next one. Extensive survey led to collection of various these type of insects. Mostly they are identified based on the keto taxi because these have uh, since still even today the identification or classification of this insect is a very debatable issue because species concept we say that naturally interbreeding but they have the uh, external sperm transfer. So they do not use uh, the genitalia for the sperm transfer but still the coloration the keto taxi and the mode of arrangement of uh, this springing organ. These play an important role in identification of these insects. Next one, please. So these are some of the key characters based on which we identify the insects. Next, next. And further, we went for the uh, scanning electron micrograph studies. Most of the species are new to the country, are new to the science. Many species are new species which have not yet been described. And we tried to describe all these species with the help of electron microscope photographs. Please. Apart from this, we tried to describe JPGs, anajapicids, and Compodidae for the first time. Next. 
and some oribatid mites also we have worked and now coming to the second part this is the biodiversity part which we have done in our laboratory and we tried to conduct some uh, experiments as how the agrochemicals drastically affect the population of these insects agrochemicals in the sense we are using the fertilizers the pesticides growth promoters to increase the yield on one hand we are talking about increasing the yield and on the other hand these compounds are definitely inflicting certain damage to these uh, sophisticated insects next one so due to the indiscriminate use of these chemicals the distribution of these insects are same uh, changing if you look into the studies of the developed countries they uh, do 20 year studies or 15 year studies to find out the shift in the species composition of these insects where the species distribution will change and many species after 5 6 years you cannot even get that particular species due to the use of the agrochemicals and some species you can see their movement from one place to other place and many species they are losing their habitats and their migration routes these type of many papers you can get next one so this is the banned insecticide of course we can see reports that it this endosulfan has a very drastic effect on the population of these insects next one so many insects have been sampled out of which we can see what is the population before and after the application of insecticides next one same is the effect of uh, chlorpyrifos on columbola then again chlorpyrifos again this one cypermethrin it is a pyrethroid it has a drastic knockdown effect on the insects inside we may think that we, since we are using the foliar insecticides it may not have any effect on the soil insects even though we are applying the foliar insecticides its droplets they are distributed in the crop canopy and ultimately they will be deposited on the soil so that may need to a reduction in the population of these insects again this is foliar insecticide again this is soil insecticide nowadays carbofuran is also banned only one uh, formulation is allowed still we are going for uh, the soil insecticides we in, even we are going for the midacloprid we are going for the fipronil granules granule formulation is available for many uh, insecticides since they are penetrating the soil even though they are very much effective as a systemic insecticide which go into the shoot system and root system of plants and they give control of the pests for a long period of time on one hand and on the other hand they are detrimental to these insects next one again this is the soil insecticide even the herbicides which we are using they pose a serious threat to these organism this is the influence of atrazine the next one uh, this is the conventional and integrated plant protection measures where in integrated we can see certain increase in the number of these organisms and this is carbofuran even the growth regulators we are talking about uh, the safety they are safe to higher animals since they are targeted on insects these growth regulators have uh, tremendous detrimental effect on these insects like methoprene kinoprene phenoxicar they all have a detrimental effect on these insects so they have to be used judiciously next one even this is a growth regulator dimelin is a growth regulator some insecticides they stimulate like malathion they stimulate the abundance of carabidae parathion decreased these tablinids oxidimin these are some of the other arthropods next one this is the modified talgan funnel in which we can modify the intensity of 
life so that the maximum number of insects can be cut in Talgren funnel. Next one. This is another small experiment. Our uh, Varanasi soil is very much rich in these insects. I do not know about uh, the soil here. Since they are very much less disturbed and uh, we have a very fertile soil, we can get large number of these insects there. This is a small experiment in the Brinjal field. Next one. Where we collected more than 66,000 specimens and in simply Brinjal crop we have nine genera. These are some of the predominant genera and these are some of the less predominant genera. Here you can see some of the uh, insecticides, even though the cypermethrin is very much detrimental. We can see after 20 months, we can see a buildup in the population. Similarly, spinosad, you can see an increase in the popula population after seven days. And control uh, previous. So some of the insecticides, even though they are detrimental in the initial period, Somehow they increase the population. They are uh, for, uh, they decompose very fast. Even if you take the cyanotranilipol, chlorantranilipol, these are the insecticides. The half life is very less. So if we conduct the uh, we conducted few experiments with these insecticides also, even though there is a tremendous decrease of these beneficial insects in the initial period, we could see a buildup of uh, these organisms after three weeks. Next one. So this is again in rice also we have sampled. You can see some of the insecticides uh, were beneficial to these insects. Next one. The same data in the next second year. Next one. So even though we are using the insecticides on one hand, how to promote the growth of these organisms? so that they can proliferate and increase in the field and we can do some justice to these organisms. We should supply more of organic matter because they feed on the organic matter and increased plant diversity, intercropping, mixed cropping, they should be advocated to increase this population and protecting the habitat of soil fauna and ultimately need-based and judicious use of these insecticides to promote their development. Next one. So we can supply organic matter to farm a specific niche by dumping of the vegetable waste, uh, farmyard manure, all those things, green manure, compost, straw litter. When we applied these things, we could see a increase of population of these organisms. Next one. So this is what we can see with sheep manure, with straw manure, we can see an increase in the population. Next one. Here also you can see uh, food waste also increases the population of the insect. Crops, we can use the mixed crops, which will stimulate the biodiversity. We can use the buffer strips, reduce the tillage practices, crop rotation, which will increase the nutrient cycling and promote the growth of these organisms. We can protect the habitat by reducing the tillage, maximizing the soil cover, minimizing the compaction. Whenever there is a need, we have to go for. Nowadays, even the ESA-based IPM, they suggest that we should look for the pest and natural enemy ratio, and then only we could have the decision making. So decision making is more important before going for the application of the insecticide, whether it is needed or not, one has to be so particular. The farmer has to take a right decision. Next one. Next one. So on one hand, we are using uh, the agrochemicals, which are detrimental to these organisms. And on the other hand, to prevent the impact inflicted by these use of agrochemicals, we should support the soil to increase its health and promote the biodiversity of biodiversity index of these organisms is most important. 
because now uh, nowadays the central insect registration board they are also giving more importance on these organisms there should be least disturbance to these organisms so obviously there is a threat to biodiversity if we are continuously using these agrochemicals that's why we can see in the ipm there is a collapse of the crop protection system due to the excessive use of insecticides all the natural enemies and these beneficial insects are totally depleted which will lead to a change in the community structure and mostly these should be given more importance by the policy makers and these should be declared as the endangered species so that one can con uh, conserve these organisms and we should have documentation the more important thing is what organisms we have we do not have any record how many species are there in the mango how many species are there in the banana field because it is not same in all the places we should have a documentation how many species are there what is the diversity and what is their role how best we can protect these organisms so once we have a list of organisms in our hand then we could help them and they should be uh, made awareness to the farmers that these are very small organisms and you should not harm these speechless small organisms whenever we are interacting with the farmers and ultimately we can enhance the soil biological activity by using uh, the crop diversity or uh, dumping the organic matter so all these things next one apart from this we also have a collection on various insects in our so our museum is nothing before the tnau museum so very thank you for the opportunity thank you one and all for in, having invited me and giving an opportunity to be before i'm so happy to see you all and i think all of you are working hardly because nowadays it is mandatory that you should uh, produce good papers there is one side it is academic side where you need high impact factors other side is the corporate side the corporate side is always looking not only for your degree because we recently we um, convened a program in uh, kerala agriculture university with the cortiva so their requirement is different so once you are uh, coming to phd you should decide whether i will be preparing myself for the corporate sector or i will be preparing myself for the academic sector accordingly you have to improve your cv so if you are applying to the corporate sector they look for how many techniques you know how many isolation techniques what are all the laboratory techniques even though you are an entomologist they will be uh, interested in crossing techniques so if you are aware of and if you have worked in various techniques their biodata will be totally different from others having a great point and uh, having paper and all the everything will be everyone will be having but you see your cv that how i am different from others you should have something which shows your cv different from the others then only they will have a look into your biodata otherwise 600 700 cvs daily they are reaching the corporate sectors so this is one thing i wanted to share so with these words i thank you all for your patience Outs, huh? based on which you can uh, interact with him okay sir initially he, he told about uh, there are uh, some columbolans which can even feed on uh, nematodes yes ma'am So, have you documented any nematode uh, feeding columbolans? Nematophagus, um, we did not focus. Actually, we did. Ne we never cultured any patch uh, due to the short number of staff and all. We were just collecting an observation only. And apart from this, uh, my students they are now uh, working in different fields. One is working on. Uh, um spodoptera pheromone with nanotechnology other one is working on the pheromones of fruit fly another one is working on the uh biodiversity of uh, the stem borer throughout the country and similarly the stored grain pests 
Minthuras Viridis. Since Minthuras is the uh, pest. Yes. Pest, yeah. we will be saying. And for the mushroom, we have a problem of columbulin, right? Of course, That's wherever the, mushroom is uh, there. Uh, so, in that case, we have to go with... Uh, some chemical chemical only mm. fumigation so if uh, if you say that there is a nematophagus columbolin is available is it feasible to culture them so that we can have two in one that is it can feed on nematode same time it can enrich the soil actually culturing um, columbolum only one canada species is being cultured wherever i have referred so culturing them is a very difficult thing because very soft and soft bodied insects Wherever experiments are being done, they do only with Candida species. It's a very commonly available one. Otherwise, Nematophagus, uh, Columbolandal, I couldn't see any uh, culture. My question is, whatever you have discussed, it's all about the beneficial effect of this Columbolans and pest. And very few are associated with the harmful effect. Have you documented any uh, Apterogate pest which are uh, responsible for transmitting any disease and any viral or bacterial disease in soil ecosystem? No, that much in-depth studies, we didn't do any disease transmission. Soil, there will be a lot of uh, uh, pathogens. It will be either entomopathogens also. Of course. Is there any record which affects uh, columbola? Entomopathogens affecting columbolans? Entomopathogens, natural balance is always there. No, definitely, it is a cycle, you know. So, some entomopathogens like metarhizium or whatsoever it is, uh, they will be, of course, killing some of the insects. But these are so uh, tremendous. Uh, these numbers are, if the soil is undisturbed, they outnumber all the insects. So I could not say the entomopathogenic uh, uh, fungi or bacteria will be very much deleterious.